Go ahead. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Sam DiTavio. I'm here to talk to you about my uh, senior uh, graduation project. And it's going to involve uh, the full duplex analog serial communication. And basically, the way I like to tell people is uh, well, full, dupl full duplex communication is, if you don't know what it is, it's communication in two different directions. So, an example of full duplex communication, the way I like to tell people about it would be a two-way phone conversation with two people talking on the phone back and forth to each other. Um, only in this, um, this application, we're going to be using uh, data instead of voice. The objective of this project um, to uh, establish full duplex bidirectional serial communication over 100 meters or, uh, single pair of wires. Um, what I did uh, is I got a 500 foot spool of wire and what it's basically supposed to do is I have three uh, analog circuit stages. Uh, one's a base adapter transceiver, remote adapter transceiver, and automatic polarity switch. The um, automatic polarity switch is not exactly necessary. It's just a little added bonus uh, in case someone were to switch the positive and negative wires um, using four uh, 15 volt Zener diodes and four N channel and P channel MOSFETs, it would automatically give you positive polarity no matter which way you put the wires into the circuit. Um, <clears throat> so I hooked up a spool in between those two stages just to show, for example, a two way phone conversation using data would represent pretty much a, a phone conversation if I were on the phone right now talking to somebody across campus, that you would still be able to establish that type of communication. Another purpose of this project is to simulate control of some communication device, um, like a security system, uh, remote control. I mean, that's all full duplex communication. If you have um, your remote control, you're controlling your TV, that's full duplex communication. Um, an example of something that would not be full duplex communication is if you're just um, Say you're monitoring something on like a, a water tank or something like that, but you're unable to control it. If you can see what the water tank is doing, say if the water is empty or half full, um, then that would be say that would be a single duplex communication, um, and it's not full duplex until you have the ability to control it. So if it was single, then you, you're uh, you'd only be able to tell what your water tank is doing, and you wouldn't be able to control it. Um, <clears throat> The way I approach this project, uh, this is my block diagram. Um, I'm going to have the, this is a, a device used at the base, which would be uh, a function generator is what I use for this project. A, uh, the base adapter transceiver, um, the base adapter transceiver will send the data that you give it here, and it'll go through the automatic polarity switch. It'll send it through the remote adapter transceiver to the remote device on the, uh, the remote adapter. And this remote device could be something like a what, like a water tank or a, a television or a computer monitor, something along those lines. And basically, the point is to you would send you would uh, input some sort of data here, and you'd want to see it out here. And the way it's full duplex is that you can send something through here, and it'll send it back this way, and you'll be able to see it on the device on the base device as well. Um, I powered the base adapter transceiver with a 15 volt power supply and the benefit of this using the circuit is it's very efficient it only uses 15 volts of power and it also regulates it down to 12 volts to make it uh, easier for some of the components in the circuit to operate um, so you won't have to power the remote adapter transceiver with any type of power supply because it's already being done over here all you have to do is connect the wires from these two circuits make sure they're connected properly and you'll uh, be able to achieve power of this circuit as well. The data is sent from the base adapter to the remote adapter by switching signal line voltage between two definite levels. And what I did was I put it the function generator. I gave it a zero to five volt uh, square wave. And when it goes through the circuit, uh, the components are going to step it up to a nine to 12 volt pulse. And the 12 volt is what is the voltage at the signal line that's being regulated um, that's being stepped down from the 15 volts. And um, 
what you need to do is keep the signal line voltage high enough so that the, uh, the regulator on the remote adapter transceiver will stay in regulation at all times. If, you, if somehow it were to get out of regulation, I'll, I'll go into detail about this in a little bit, uh, it would cause some problems for uh, communication and stuff like that. So <clears throat> you go from the base adapter, you shift the serial data in to 9 to 12 volt pulse, and it um, goes through a comparator. And what the comparator does is um, basically the way, uh, the way comparators work is uh, they look kind of like this. And you're going to have two lines going in, two lines going out. So if, um, say, 12 volts here on the positive, if, uh, actually, let's, let's put that over here. If 12 volts here on the negative, in order for this output to go, for this output to go high here, and whatever the output is here is going to be whatever voltage you're using to to power the comparator. So if I have, say if I have five volts here on the positive, the positive needs to exceed the negative for the output to go high. So in this case, the output will stay low. And then if I set this up to 15 here, the positive is going to exceed the negative at that point, which is going to cause this output to step up to 12 volts, which is um, what I'm giving it, what I'm powering it with. And this allows the regulator to stay in regulation. And again, I'll get into that in a little bit here. The data is sent back from, if I already give it some data here, and I want to see it out here at the device of the base, um, this uses uh, current switching to switch the data. And <clears throat> this remote adapter here is also going to have a, a, a function generator inputted to it. Uh, again, I use a 0 5 volt pulse. And that does is when um, <clears throat> when the input of this function generator is low, uh, there is a 25 milliamp current source inside the remote adapter transceiver. When it's low, it's going to stay at 25 milliamps, which is going to then cause a small voltage drop across uh, the current sensing resistor at this stage, and, but it's not going to be enough to put the output high. When, this, when the input to this circuit goes high, it'll step up, um, it'll draw an additional 8 milliamps of current from the base, which will then be enough to um, add a significant voltage drop across that current sensing resistor at the base adapter, which will uh, then be enough to make the positive exceed the negative on that comparator, which will then cause the output to go up to that voltage, at which, in a way, that's that would be your data, that would resemble your data here um, being received on the other end of the device. Um, these are two examples of the switching schematic, schematics, and I'll get into the broader schematics in uh, just a minute here. Uh, this is the voltage regulator, and this, is, this picture is of the voltage switching, and this is how the current switching works. And uh, this is basically, you put the 0 to 5 volt pulse here. It's uh, acts as an um, open switch when <clears throat> the when the input is high, then you will have this switch will be open, and it will cause this 12 volts to go straight across to here, which is why the the wave here is going to be up to 12 volts. When it's low, the switch is going to be closed which is going to cause this uh, voltage here. Now, the schematic that I'm going to show you in a little bit is going to show a resistor here and a 2.4 volt Zener diode, which are then going to cause a, uh, a 2.4 volt and an additional, there's a transistor in here too, which is going to draw an additional 0.7 volts from the base emitter junction, which is going to take that 12 volts down to 9 volts, and that's going to be what you give your comparator over here. This reference voltage right here is going to be, uh, at all times, it's going to be a constant 2.5 volts. And it's not shown on this schematic, 
but right here there's a voltage divider um, and it's going to look kind of like this. So if we have 12 volts here, there's going to be it's going to be a voltage divider here, which will send that input to the Farragher. This is going to be a constant 2.5 volts. When this is 12 volts, uh, I don't remember the resistor values offhand. I have the schematic. I'll show you in just a second. It's going to cause this. You're going to have 2.5 volts here. It's going to cause, when it's 12 volts, it's going to cause this, um, <coughs> this voltage here to be um, around at 2.9, which is going to make the positive exceed the negative, which will then cause that output to go high. And if it's, you have 9 volts here, that's going to cause this voltage to drop to 2.1 which is not going to be enough to exceed the negative terminal, your output's going to go low again. Um, but this is what you are going to have from your serial data here. So whatever your serial data here is doing, it's going to be seen on the output of this comparator right here. And that's the communication from left to right. Now the Communication from right to left is going to be this uh, zero volt pulse here, zero to five volt pulse here. And again, I, I said earlier that this is a constant 25 milliamps uh, current source. When this data is low, there's a couple transistors in here as well. It's going to be off. And when it goes high, it's going to draw that additional eight milliamps of current from the base adapter circuit. And then <clears throat> base adapter circuit when it's up to 33 milliamps. This is our current sensing resistor here. And um, when it's up to 33 milliamps, this is a 3 ohm resistor. 33 times 3, if you use Ohm's law, it's 99 millivolts. And that is going to be, well, this positive terminal here is going to be just, just slightly under 12 volts, but it's just enough that you can pretty much call it 12. Um, so if you have that 33 milliamps here, it's going to cause a 11.9, um, uh, and a couple decimal places, voltage drop at the negative terminal, which is then going to cause your, um, it's then going to cause your uh, positive terminal to exceed the negative, which will cause the output to go high. If you have 25 milliamps, 25 times 25 milliamps times 3 is 75 milliamps. That's not going to be quite enough to exceed this positive terminal here. So with 25 milliamps of current, this output is going to be low. But again, this is going to this is resembles your zero to 12 volt pulse here, which is basically what you put in here will be seen right here on this output. This is a little picture of what I had hoped to do, and I basically achieved everything except for getting these fancy cases in here. Um, but this is the spool of wire that I was talking about. Uh, this is an example of someone uh, someone else's that also did this project uh, from a circuit seller magazine, and um, what this what this is doing is, uh, like I said before, just showing that you can communicate from far distances. Um, the spool bar that I bought is about 500 foot. I think this one's just a little over 100 meters. But it still achieves the same thing. Um, like I said, it'll send the serial data by ad identifying the voltage changes through the wire. Use a three terminal voltage regulator to switch between 9 and 12 volts. And like the comparator, it pulls the output towards 12 volts if the signal line voltage exceeds the threshold voltage. Um, which is what I just, I just talked about that. This is a schematic, and right here you can see as a 15 volt power supply is being fed into the regulator. I have two capacitors on either side of the regulator for filtering. And on the output here, it's going to regulate that 15 volts down to 12. Right here, this pin three, this is going to be a RS-232 connector here. Um, 
this five volt, zero to five volt pulse is going to come in here. When this, when this pulse here goes high, this transistor is going to be off. This transistor up here is going to turn on, which is going to cause this emitter and collector junction here to be virtually the same point. So you're going to have your 12 volts all the way across here. When this input here goes low, this transistor is going to be on, this transistor is going to be off. So the, the uh, emitter collector junction here is not going to be the same point anymore, which means the current has to travel through these two components here which is going to cause a, this is the 2.4 volt Zener diode. It's going to cause, it's going to, you're going to get a 2.4 volt drop across here. And then across this resistor, you're going to have 0.7 volts from the base emitter junction. So it comes out to be just a little under nine volts that you're going to be seeing on the output here. And this is going to be fed into the automatic polarity switch, which I'll get into in just a minute. <clears throat> this is what the circuit actually looks like on the breadboard that I had built. Um, there is, uh, this is the output of the uh, of the comparator, and so this is you're gonna have an oscilloscope up to this. This is before I had connected anything to the rest of the circuit. So what I have now is a scope probe on this output to monitor that, and what I'll be seeing on there is a zero to twelve volt pulse. Up here is a Zener diode, two point four volt Zener, and it's me in series with the uh, the resistor that I showed you, uh, which is be this guy right here. It's basically going to cause the base emitter junction to um, to draw that current, and then <coughs> you'll have that voltage drop across there. And these are my filtering caps. And uh, this is a potentiometer for uh, adjusting the resistance, which can you can basically it's like a manual control. You can control whether you want your data to be um, higher or lower than the set points on the comparator, which will then you can control with the or output goes high or not just by adjusting this potentiometer. <clears throat> and this is a picture of my uh, pulse that was seen. Uh, this is a picture of the 9 to 12 volt pulse. And as you can see, it's a little less than 9. So we have, uh, this is our ground right here, this line. And it's 2 volts per division. So you go 2, 4, 6, 8. It's around 8.2. There's 10 volts here. There's 12 volts up here. Um, so this is around 8.2 volts to up to 12. Um, 8.2 volts is a little less than 9 uh, because the 9 to 12 volts was just in a uh, theoretical world and you're never going to be able to see that and uh, you'll never have your exact ideal numbers when you actually go to build something like this. But again, it's, it's enough of a difference between the, uh, the uh, two voltage points that you'll be able to, your circuit will be able to do the switching without any issue. Motor adapter transceiver. Uh, this is just a picture of a serial device that I got off the internet. What it does is send data to the base unit by switching current drawn by the remote adapter and receive the signal line from the base by sensing signal line voltages. Uh, I already talked about that as well. Um, five volt precision reference and circuit to use the data input voltage to switch current drawn by the remote adapter. What this is talking about here is a TL431 shunt regulator, um, which is going to, I'll get, I'll get into how that works in just a minute. Um, but this is where your, uh, this in combination with a uh, voltage divider is going to give you your constant 2.5 volts that I talked about um, at the one set point for the, one of the input pins on the comparator uh, for the remote adapter stage. This here is a schematic of the remote adapter stage. Um, the previous schematic that I showed you, um, we hooked up to an automatic polarity switch, which is hooked up to the input to this circuit. And again, this circuit is powered by the previous circuit, which makes it pretty efficient. And this point right here is where I can shift my serial data in. So when this goes high, these two transistors are gonna turn on. This network in here is a, this is the 25 milliamp current source I was talking about. Now when, it's, when, this, when these two transistors turn on, when the input goes high, it's going to suck another 8 milliamps of current from the base adapter circuit, which is then going to cause this um, 25 milliamps to be stepped up to 30. Um, be stepped up to uh, 33 milliamps, and the current you can think of it as a node. So here's your node. So here, here are 25 milliamps, and you're going to draw another 8 
previous circuit, which is going to give you 33 out here, just on the flaw. And then right here, um, this is the comparator that I was uh, talking about. And what this is going to do, you have 45, uh, 47k resistor and 15k resistor here. And this is voltage divider from the 9 to 12 volt pulse that you're going to be seeing coming in from the previous circuit up here. It'll be fed into the positive terminal of the comparator. This negative here, this is your constant 2.5 volts that is always going to be seen from this TL431 shunt regulator. This signal line up here is 5 volts. These two resistors are equal, it divides the voltage by 2. You get a constant 2.5 volts here. When your voltage up here is 12 volts, it's going to cause this voltage at this set point to be somewhere around 2.9. When it's 9 volts, it's going to cause this voltage at this set point to do um, to be a little to be around 2.1. So in order for this output to be high, you need 12 volts here instead of 9, or it's going to be low. And I mean, you can uh, do your calculations with well, with the uh, this voltage divider here if you want. It's just going to be Say if it's 12, it's going to be 12 divided by 47k plus 15k. And then that will give you your current. You multiply that by this 15k resistor. That will give you the voltage at this set point, which if it's 12, it will be around 2.9. And 2.1 for if it's 9 volts. Um, the way this current source here works is we're going to have, um, well, this in order for this to stay in regulation here, I have around 90 microamps of current coming up through this resistor. And these two trans these two uh, transistors here are going to form a current mirror with a gain of 70. And what that does is it mul multiplies that current by 70. And if you do your calculations, you do 90 microamps times 70, it'll come out to be around 6.3 um, 6 milliamps. And with that current, it's going to provide enough current to the shunt regulator to get a reference voltage started across it, which is then going to give you this 2.5 volts coming in here to this comparator. And then your output, whether it's high or low, with whatever you are giving it at the previous circuit, um, that'll be sent out to your serial device that you'll have uh, out there. This is a picture of the circuit before it was connected to the other one. This is, a, again, this is the comparator. This is the output. This is going to go 0 to 5 with uh, 0 to 5 volts with whatever um, you give it from the previous circuit. And these are the two transistors. Pretty basic. I have better pictures than this. This is a 0 to 5 volt pulse that was seen on the output when you um, was seen on the output when you establish your uh, one-way communication. This is the two circuits connected together um, without the polarity switch. I have a picture of the polarity switch in just a minute, but this is uh, green wires connecting the two circuits. This circuit is not powered. This circuit is powered from this 15-volt power supply here. Um, and here, see the uh, what I was talking about, the 25 to, 30, or 25 to 33 milliamps current switching. Um, you're not going to have those exact values in the real world. So it's about 23.5 milliamps switching up to 31.8, which is still enough to make the comparator on the base adapter circuit do what it needs to do. And this is just another picture of the circuit um, after it's connected and after I connected up that spool wire. This is a 0 to 12 volt pulse that was seen on the output of the, the remote or the base adapter's comparator. And this is what you're going to be seeing when you have um, the communication going from right to left from the remote adapter back to the base adapter. This is a, a picture of the automatic polarity switch. These are the four 15 volt standard diodes. Uh, these are going to be two end channel. MOSFETs, and these are two P-channel MOSFETs. That's how these work are the P-channel MOSFETs will make the, um, the drain and the source the same point, an internal switch, when the source is 5 volts greater than the gate, and it'll make these the same point. The end channels work the opposite. If the gate is 5 volts greater than the source, then it'll make the drain and the source the same point. Uh, so that's little bit about how that switching works in that circuit. This is a picture of the automatic polarity switch. Here you have the four uh, 15 volt Zener diodes. And these are the two P-channel. These are the two N-channel MOSFETs. And this is a picture of the whole schematic. Uh, I drew this because it was uh, going to be relatively complex to do it in P-splice. 
But <clears throat> this is, you're going to have your data input here. Gonna, I talked about this. This is where the automatic Larry switch gets hooked up. Um, you can send data in here. So basically, uh, long story short, whatever you put in here, this data input, um, it will be seen on this output right here, this 0 to 12 up here. And whatever you put on this, um, this input right here, this pin 3, whatever you put in here, uh, you'll see it on this uh, output out here, uh, this comparator. Um, so the way the serial data works is just I would write a, uh, a C program, uh, just send out a single hex character. So uh, if, if I have, here's the uh, here's base, here's remote, um, send out a hex character from the PC. This is instead of doing a function generator. Um, instead of 0 to 5 volt pulse, um, you guys are familiar with the hexadecimal numbers, a numbering system. Uh, if I were to give this, uh, let's say an F0 right here, this F0 will travel to this point, and basically it's just digital data that's going to be seen on the output here. But basically, it's going to give you 11110000, which as a wave is just going to look something like that. Um, that's just an example. I mean, I could do just keeping it simple here, I can make this an FF, um, which would be four more ones, and then drop off the zero, which would be given another character. And then I could do the same thing going back this way, and it'll be seen on that other output. <clears throat> and then this is a, just a picture of everything together. Um, for this project, I had to use Two function generators, one DMM, one digital oscilloscope, and one 15 volt power supply. And this full wire is 500 feet. Uh, so I have two wires from this circuit traveling up through here, going through all this wire, coming back down here. And then I hook it up to this automatic polarity switch here, switches that. This blue wire carries it over to the other circuit. And that's how we establish our full duplex communication in that regard. Um, you might ask why would I choose to do it? with uh, such uh, unglamorous analog techniques when in the world today we have things such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, power over Ethernet, stuff like that. Um, the reason being is that this, like I said before, the circuit is relatively efficient and not just um, efficient because it, um, it's, uh, it's also inexpensive and <clears throat> it, um, it's inexpensive and that's, that's just... Uh, Another reason why, but um, it was also good practice to, to shape up my knowledge of analog components and how they work. Um, so, <clears throat> just a couple reasons why this might be useful in the real world. Um, just to wrap things up, use the device, connect, connect the 15 volt to the uh, power supply to the adapter, plug in the computer, base device, and serial input, um, base adapter, transmit, and receive. And does the same thing on the other end. Power and serial port to external device. Um, the plan was to have the LEDs to indicate when they're sending the data out. I didn't do that. I didn't think it was necessary. Um, but that's another thing you could do just to help yourself visualize what you are seeing and when your data is arriving and how fast it takes. <clears throat>